Constructing high-rise buildings solves three major problems. Accommodating large number of people in a smaller footprint, adding more economic value to the structure, and providing better light and ventilation compared to close to the ground infrastructure. But the race of building taller and taller does not seem to be ending anytime soon. Every major city and every major country seems to be pushing harder to build taller. So what's all the race about building the tallest building in the world? Let's find out in this episode of Stories Across. Burj Khalifa in Dubai holds the current world record for being the tallest building in the world as of 2023. And many major countries like the United States, Taiwan, Malaysia, etc. have had their share to hold this title. The United States was one of the earliest countries that started the race of taller buildings, especially during the 19th century. After the American Civil War, rapid economic growth and fast occupancy of available urban space encouraged the need of building taller in order to fit increasing population and the workforce. In fact, the term skyscraper was coined in the American city of Chicago after the construction of 10-storied home insurance building in 1885. In succeeding years, more and more buildings started to pop in the center of the financial district in Chicago until in 1892, Chicago banned the construction of new skyscrapers taller than 150 feet or 46 meters. Meanwhile, in New York, the city planners were already on a construction spree, defeating Chicago in the skyscraper race with tall buildings like the Chrysler Building, Empire State Building, Tower Building, and the iconic Fat Iron Building, which also has been a backdrop for Hollywood blockbusters like Spider-Man, Hitch, As Good As It Gets, and many more. In fact, New York and Chicago for many decades were the breeding ground and symbol of modern architecture and an inspiration in a sense that this is how a well-developed and what a modern city should look like. And drawing from the same inspiration, the title of the world's tallest building started to shift towards the Eastern Hemisphere during the late 20th and the 21st century with countries like Malaysia, China, Dubai, and Saudi Arabia. But today's skyscrapers look nowhere close to the skyscrapers of the 19th and early 20th century. According to modern sources like the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, a building that is at least 330 feet or 100 meters can qualify as a skyscraper. But there is no perfect definition in regards to the exact dimension or design for a building to be called a skyscraper. Countries like the United States and Malaysia have argued over the title for the tallest building when the Sears Tower standing at 1,451 feet with 108 floors set the world's tallest building record after its completion in 1973. But when Malaysia constructed the Petronas Tower in 1998 with a total height of 1,483 feet and 88 floors, it snatched the title from Chicago's Sears Tower. Clearly, the Petronas Tower were the winner when compared to the total construction height. But the board advocating for this year's tower argued that Sears Tower was clearly a taller structure. But people at the Petronas Towers countered this argument with the fact that the extra height the Sears Tower had was because of its long antenna. And antennas are not a structural part of the building. The Petronas Towers had spires, which were a part of the building that was 10 meters higher than the roof of Sears Tower. The board in Chicago backfired with the argument stating that the highest floor in Sears Tower was 108th floor and Petronas Towers only had 88 floors. Therefore, Sears Tower, given the number of floors, should hold the title. After a long-standing debate and a lot of analysis from media and publication, the title in the end stayed with the Petronas Tower. But this record of Petronas Towers was broken by Taipei 101 in Taiwan in the year 2004 and subsequently by Burj Khalifa in 2009. By the year 2022, many more taller buildings have been constructed across the world breaking Taipei 101's record. This is a chart representing the increasing height of the tallest buildings over the years, which clearly shows that every new record was broken by the succeeding structure with a marginal percentage change. But Burj Khalifa became an outlier after its construction in 2009. It was a massive 62% taller than its predecessor. So what all these percentage change mean and what it has to do with the idea of building taller? Every tall building is constructed with the idea of using it for mixed-use purposes. We need just one tall building and it can accommodate offices, residential apartments, and even hotels. It's a wonderful architectural innovation for space use, which adds incredible economic value to the building. 
Also, a large number of employees and residents can be accommodated in a smaller footprint. This helps save a lot of urban space and make way for other important urban infrastructures like roads, trains, parks, etc. This chart proves the efficient use of a taller building. Almost every building from Taipei 101 to more modern Shanghai Tower is occupied more than 70 to 80 percent, leaving more space available for surrounding infrastructural development. But nearly a third of Burj Khalifa is unoccupied. This unoccupied section of the building generally consists of maintenance, operation floors, spires, and antennas, which cumulatively is called a vanity hide. And a lot of skyscrapers have defeated its predecessor by taking advantage of vanity height alone. And vanity height is not just there for aesthetics and to break world records. It provides essential communications to the building and to broadcast data over long distances at low radiation angle without any obstruction. This is exactly the reason radio and TV towers are built taller than any residential apartment or office building. But skyscrapers have two powerful enemies, wind and earthquake. When buildings are constructed taller, they constantly face fast-moving unobstructed wind forces at higher altitudes called the wind loads. These fast-moving winds batter the face of the building causing turbulence. Although taller buildings are constructed with some flexibility, which allow them to sway back and forth due to pressure differences, it can be discomforting for the occupants inside the building. These same winds when hitting the building surface could also cause wind drafts, which accelerate the winds up and down the surface of the building, causing discomfort to the people walking at the street level. Therefore, architects have to come up with aerodynamic solutions like corner softening, setback design, and gradient tapering to reduce the effect of wind loads. These design features not only solve challenges faced due to winds, but also creates a more aesthetic appeal to the overall structure. But earthquakes are a different beast. The shaking was violent and lasted for what felt like an eternity. I was lying in bed uh, with my two kids. Unlike wind, its magnitude cannot be altered and it can sweep the ground underneath the feet of the skyscraper. Therefore, it needs solutions that can absorb seismic energy as much as possible. The buildings are put on a form of bearing or shock absorbers that when hit with high energies from any seismic activity, it can absorb all the energy preventing the structure from a catastrophic collapse. A similar but an iconic safety feature has been installed in the vanity area of Taipei 101. A device called the Tuned Mass Damper or TMD is located between 91st and 87th floor of the building. This protects the entire building from strong winds up to 216 km per hour, which is a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone. The TMD also serves as a counterbalance and a shock damper for earthquakes. In fact, Taipei 101 is located just 660 feet away from a major fault line. Another important reason to build taller is to attract international attention. And many countries, especially the Middle East, is always in an attempt to build something unconventional and that has a lot of wow factor to it. Since 2009, no other country has been able to break the record of the Burj Khalifa. Since its construction, it has attracted millions of tourists and multi-billion dollars worth of real estate investment in the country. Such incredible constructions also attract film companies that wish to shoot in such grand locations. Burj Khalifa shined when blockbuster movies like Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol shot the iconic scene of Tom Cruise rappelling down the building's glass walls, hanging 518 meters in the air. But after Burj Khalifa, Saudi Arabia decided to break its record by constructing the world's first one-kilometer tall building, the Jeddah Tower. Construction of the Jeddah Tower began in April 2013, but unfortunately, between 2017 and 2019, the construction came to a standstill after the Saudi Arabian purge and labor issues with the contracting companies. It's been four years, but the project seems to be abandoned by the Jeddah Economic Company the lead developer of the project. After abandoning the Jeddah Tower project, Saudi Arabia has shifted their focus on yet another record-breaking project, the line. But only this time, they are not just building taller, they are building it longer. A 170-kilometer-long continuous linear city in the middle of a desert. In fact, we have made an entire video covering Saudi Arabia's line city, so do check it out. 
Increasing population has always been a never-ending challenge for urban planners, and constructing tall skyscrapers really helped to address these challenges. Building tall to solve real problems is one thing, but going beyond the heights of practicality and building something unconventional just to attract international attention and putting billions of dollars at stake and abandoning projects to their uncertain future really doesn't sound like well-planned city development like it used to be during the 19th century and up until the early 21st century. It's been more than a decade, Burj Khalifa still holds the tallest building record, but probably in the future someone will successfully construct a taller building that will be economically viable, livable, and also break Burj Khalifa's record. This is Stories Across, and thank you for watching.